Hello, the title for this video is the pH scale and neutralization. So there is uh, stuff in here that's not too difficult. It's probably stuff you've come across quite a lot, even all the way back from year seven. But what we're going to look at is uh, two chemicals here. One is an acid, for example, hydrochloric acid. The other one is an alkali, for example, sodium hydroxide. And these are two that you should be familiar with for this specification. Now, by looking at them, we can't tell much other than what I've labeled them as. But what we can do is use something called universal indicator. Now this is a chemical that changes color depending on whether it meets acid or alkali. So if we add some universal indicator to our acid, we get a color change. And we can add the very same universal indicator to our alkali and also get a color change. And the color change depends on the strength of the alkali or the acid. Or in other words, we could say it depends on the pH of those two chemicals. Now the pH is measured from a scale when we use universal indicator. So for our acid, let's just get those out of the way. For our acid, the color is matches up with number three. So the acid is pH three. And for our alkali, it actually matches up with pH 13. So the alkali is pH 13. So this gives us an indication of how strong or how weak the alkali or the acid is. Another way of measuring the pH is by not using universal indicator, but by using a pH probe. And that basically just, we just put the probe into the liquid or the chemical or the solution, and that gives you a value of the pH. So there we've got, for example, pH 2.8. You might notice it's actually a bit more accurate than using the color scale, which actually just gives us whole number approximations for the pH. Now, the other thing to look at is the kind of ions that are present in acids and alkalis. When we've got hydrochloric acid, what we have is hydrogen ions and chloride ions. And in our sodium hydroxide, we have sodium ions and hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ions is the OH minus. Now, it's the hydrogen ions that make an acid an acid and, and the hydroxide ions that make an alkali an alkali. So if we just take everything else away, the other ions away, we can see what happens when an acid is added to an alkali. So when we have acid and alkali reacted together, we get what's called a neutralization reaction. So here's our acid and alkali being joined. The pH changes, gives us an indication that it's neutral. This is neutralization. But what happens to the ions? Well, these are obviously brought together when we neutralize and the hydrogen ions react with the hydroxide ions and they produce water. So when the hydroxide and the hydrogen ions react, we get water. Now we can summarize most of that information on a little slide over here. So we've got our pH scale at the top and remember uh, on our pH scale, seven is neutral. So there's our neutral right in the middle there and everything on the left-hand side of that, in other words, pH, one to six, that would all be acid. And the further away you go from neutral, the stronger the acid. So everything less than pH seven would be acid and everything greater than pH seven would be alkali. So alkalis have a pH bigger than seven or greater than seven, or in other words, anything from eight up to 14. Okay, now at the far end of each of the pHs, we have the strongest alkali and the strongest acid. So pH 14 is the strongest alkali and pH 1 is the strongest acid. So neutral in the middle and stronger as you go further away from neutral, whether it's acid or alkali. Okay, so the next and final thing I want to do for this video is just to make a note about the fact that acids have concentrations of hydrogen ions inside them. So an acid is an acid because it has hydrogen ions. And with our alkali, we said that it's an alkali because it has a certain concentration of hydroxide ions. So we can make a note of that there. There's an acid and alkali and the two types of iron. Now what we can do is write an equation for what happens when an acid reacts with an alkali, or in other words, when hydrogen ions react with hydroxide ions. So we could write it out like this. We have our acid and alkali, remember that this is from a previous video, an acid and an alkali gives us a neutralization reaction, neutralization reaction, and that will give us, if you remember, a salt and water. That will produce a salt and it will produce some water. And we're, we're about to find out how the water is actually produced, if you haven't uh, kind of remembered it already from the few minutes ago. So we have hydrogen ions which are in solution, so we write a little AQ, 
to show they're dissolved in water. And we have hydroxide ions that are also aqueous or dissolved in water or in solution. When they react together, they produce molecules of water. So this is where the water comes from in neutralization reactions between acids and alkalis. And remember, water is in the form of a liquid. Okay, so a fairly short-ish short video about acids, alkalis, and the pH scale and neutralization, and a fairly important equation that you need to know.